welcome back. So imagine you own a restaurant and there is one particular fish dish that just won't sell. You've modified the preparation, you've changed up the side dishes, you've even featured it as the catch of the day. It's a buttery, delicious white fish, but nothing you do seems to make people order it. Before you 86 it, one easy solution might be just to change the name of the dish. This is exactly what happened to the fish formerly known as the Patagonian toothfish. Back in 1977, Lee Lance was a seafood merchant who was on the hunt for a new species of fish to market here in the United States. He found just what he was looking for, the Patagonian toothfish, a mild, non-fishy fish that was easy to prepare and hard to overcook. But he couldn't sell it. People just wouldn't buy it. And he wondered if the name was influencing consumer appeal. So he changed the name from Patagonian toothfish to Chilean sea bass. Voila! Suddenly, it was an instant seller. Here's another name change you might not know. Google wasn't always Google. It was actually born Backrub as a reference to the way that it analyzed the internet's backlinks. But not all products are saved by a simple name change. In the 1970s, one company had a brilliant idea to create an appetite-suppressing candy. And it came in chocolate, caramel, and butterscotch flavors. You make me nervous. Question, why take diet pills when you can enjoy AIDS? AIDS helps you lose weight safely and effectively. Use only as directed. Why? Indeed. Names are important. They make a massive difference in the products we buy and the way we interact with brands, especially our own names, which is why personalized marketing strategies are here to stay. According to brain research, there is unique brain activation when we hear or see our own name. It's as if we're engaging in the behaviors and thought patterns that serve as our core identity and personality markers. It's so powerful that it happens with infants and even people in a persistent vegetative state. Implicit egotism and its close cousin, nominative determinism, refer to this idea that we naturally gravitate toward people, places, and things that are like us. For example, research shows that letters in our names influence other life decisions, including where we live or what we do for a living. Implicit egotism researchers have discovered that Philadelphia, with a population of almost twice that of Jacksonville, has 2.2 times more men named Jack, but 10.4 times more men named Phil. These guys discovered an even weirder phenomenon. People seem to gravitate toward careers identified with their names. In the United States, the names Dennis, Jerry, and Walter are equally popular, but dentists are twice as likely to be named Dennis as they are Jerry or Walter. Now, before you blast me about correlation not being causation and about one study not being counted as science, consider this. In their research, they used 1940 U.S. Census data and they found that people named Baker, Barber, Butcher, and Butler were all overrepresented in those respective careers. Any value greater than one indicated more people working in that career than you'd expect by chance. So a score of 1.40 for Baker means that people named Baker were 40% more likely to work as Bakers than you'd expect based on the popularity of the career or the popularity of the name Baker. It's actually called an aptronym, and it's a personal name that aptly suits its owner. Like, the fastest man on the planet is Usain Bolt, Formula One race car driver Scott Speed, and Tennis Sandgren, who, you know, plays a little tennis. One more thing. Some names are more ironic than descriptive, and we call them inaptronyms, like Frank Beard, an American musician who until 2013 was the only member of the ZZ Top band that did not have a beard. And last one, I promise, Jamie Sin was the 30th Roman Catholic Archbishop of Manila and the third 
Cardinal of the Philippines. That's right, he was Cardinal Sin. You're welcome. Want to learn more about how the brain works and how to make it work better? Check out my book, Happier Hour with Einstein, Another Round, and the Full Color Companion Gratitude Journal, available now on Amazon.